This big town, small city, has hundreds of homeless people in it. You see a few on, on park benches uh, and trying to get warm in the winter, but uh, what you don't see are the people living in cars or uh, crashing with relatives on a temporary basis or uh, trying to eke out a motel room for a night or two. Most of my, shall we say, charitable work was stimulated uh, by student interest when there was a great deal of student activism. Some medical students came to me and said they'd like to do something that was relevant. And I was a young professor and they were, maybe they thought I was approachable. So we began a clinic for migrant farm workers up in Watoma, uh, where I helped gather in the professional supervisors and the students gathered the workers. And that was very successful, so successful that the state took it over. And then about 20 years ago, some medical students came to me and they said they wanted to do something that was clinical and humanitarian, charitable. They'd come to medical school with that goal, and here they were in the first or second year medical school, trapped behind a desk, reading and learning science, uh, and not seeing many patients, if any. I snooped around and found out that there was a homeless shelter for homeless men uh, at Grace Episcopal Church. It was actually done independent of the medical school administration. So this was considered an instructional activity by the medical school. Uh, not simply a charitable activity. Most of the drugs uh, medics able to dispense come free from industry or at a discount from local pharmacies. But that's still not, shall we say, tertiary care medicine. It's really primary care. It's even be lower than primary care. But it's all that these homeless and underserved people have. The nearest thing to this is a field station in a battleground. We had a patient at Grace who just wanted cough syrup because he had a bad cough. And uh, we listened to his lungs, they were terrible. He had lost a lot of weight. He had swollen lymph nodes in his neck. And it looked to us like he had a lot more than just a cough. He had traveled back and forth across the country, stopping at shelters all over. Um, we suggested that he go to the hospital. At the beginning of Medic, I had absolutely no idea it would grow like this. For one thing, I didn't think homelessness would be so persistent. Uh, for another thing, I wasn't sure that so many students would get excited by this, uh, nor that so many physicians be willing to supervise students. And it grew largely because of student enthusiasm and effort, a lot of effort on the part of students. The greatest benefit, I think, has been to expose medical students and local physicians to the needs of the underserved and to the ease with which you can actually make a difference and to the gratification of doing that. Mm -hmm.